What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. On this episode, we're wrapping up the Planner Showdown series with a big reveal. Which planner came out on top and what you can take away to make smarter equipment decisions on your farm. I'm Colin, and today I'm joined by my special guest, Tony Utel. He is our PFR technician in Effingham, Illinois, and he played a vital role in this planner showdown. Tony, you ready to do this? I've never been more ready. Let's, Let's dig in! in. So far. In case you missed the last three episodes of the Planner Showdown, here's a quick overview. This field trial was designed to help farmers understand how planner design, setup, and operating conditions affect real world performance. For this 2025 PFR study, we put three of the top planter brands, John Deere, Fint, and Case IH, through their paces in both corn and soybean trials. We looked at early emergence seed spacing, planter speed, seed size, and overall efficiency. We highly recommend going back and watching the full episodes. They're linked below. But for now, here's a cliff note. Please. We ran all three planters on two 40-acre fields. Any 40-foot planter and tractor combination was allowed. OEM setups were fair game, with the exception of Smart Depth, Smart Firmer, and ProVision. Each manufacturer operated their own planner, but a Bex employee rode in the cab with, we call that quality control. No site visits were allowed after planting, and no one saw the data until we published it, AKA this episode right now. Each manufacturer brought their top guns. Case IH ran a Magnum 380 half track, pulling a 2150S early riser. Fint brought a 942 Vario with a Momentum 31 and John Deere rolled in with an 8RX410 paired with the 1795 Exact Emerge. Part two, 24 hour emergence stand and efficiency. Let's start with emergence. In the first 24 hours, John Deere led the pack with an average of 18.8 plants emerged. Fit followed by 16.9 and Case IH came in at 14.4. And those early leads showed up in a final stand counts and spacing accuracy. Final corn populations for deer came in at 32,493, for Fint, 32,165, and for Case IH, 31,806. Deer also took top marks in spacing with 94.9% of seeds landing in the acceptable zone. So, you said acceptable. What is acceptable spacing? Well, how we measure spacing is we crawl on our hands and knees with digital calipers and measure spacing from plant to plant to plant within that row, okay? And so, a perfect spacing of 34,000 population would be 6.15 inches from plant to plant to plant, okay? So an acceptable spacing is any measurement within 33% of that 6.15 inches. So 4.12 to 8.18 inches would be what we're considering acceptable spacing. Moving on to soybean stand counts, they followed the same pattern. Deer topped the chart at 104,540 plants per acre. Fent wasn't far behind with 103,181, and Case came in at 98,902. On the efficiency front, Fint was the fastest to unfold, just one minute and 40 seconds. But for crop changeover, Deer edged out the others with a 14 minute, 39 second switch, beating Case by only 30 seconds. And Fint came in at 20 minutes and 46 seconds. You may be wondering what took place in this time frame. We had two people from each manufacturer change crop kits and change everything in their monitor to switch from corn back to soy. Part three, yield, the final showdown. Now, let's talk about what everybody really wants to talk about, 
the yield, starting with corn speed trial at five miles an hour. Drum roll, please. John Deere posted the highest yield at 234.2 bushels per acre. Case IH followed closely with 233.3, followed by Fit at 221.2. At 10 miles per hour, things got a little interesting. Fint actually gained some momentum with a yield of 227.6. Deer held steady with 228 bushel per acre. Case IH dropped to 221.9. All right, moving to the corn seed size trial where we looked at small platelets and large rounds, John Deere pulled ahead again, especially with large seed. John Deere hit 235.1. Case IH came in at 227.5 and Fent followed with 226.3 bushels per acre. Soybeans followed in a similar pattern. Deer led at both speeds with a slight bump to 79 bushel per acre at 10 miles per hour. Fent and Case IH were close behind but stayed consistent. Part four. So, who won? All right, Tony, it's time to call it. While each planter had its strong points, John Deere consistently came out ahead in early emergence, stand counts, spacing accuracy, and overall yield. But don't count the others out. Fent proved it's a real player when it comes to high-speed planting. Case IH delivered solid performance and strong yields, especially at standard speeds. Tony, at the end of the day, there's no perfect planter just a perfect match for your operation. But if this trial reminds us of anything, it's that. Early emergence really does matter. Spacing accuracy has a direct impact on yield, and the proper planter setup, no matter the color, plays a massive role. Exactly. It's not just the machine, it's how you use it. Part five, let's, let's recap. recap. So here's what we've learned from the planter showdown that you can implement on your operation. Number one, focus on planter setup. Metering, planting depth, and spacing, they can swing your yield in a big way. Don't ignore planting speed. Once again, we have proved that we can effectively and efficiently plant corn and soybeans at high speeds. Number three, early emergence is one of the best predictors of final yield. Keep a close eye on the first 48 hours after planting. And finally, match your planter to your priorities. Whether that's speed, consistency, or ease of use, let your goals guide your gear. And finally, we want to give a big thanks to the folks at Case IH, Fent, and John Deere for jumping into this trial. Each system brought something unique to the table, but in terms of all-around performance, the 2025 Planter Showdown Champion is John Deere. That wraps up this episode of The Dig. Thanks for sticking with us through the Planter Showdown series. And as always, you'll find the links to the reference studies down in the description. And you'll find all of these studies in the 2025 PFR book. Tony, appreciate you coming over to break it all down. Thanks for having me, Colin. It's always a good time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notified when future episodes drop and we'll see you on another episode of The Dig. I'm Aaron and today I'm joined by my special guest, Tony Util. You're Aaron, huh? Did I say Aaron? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I didn't even notice I said that. I did that. I'm Aaron. I did say it that. See, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> right there. Okay.